Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Hilary Chrisley, and I am the pastor of Glendora United Methodist Church. It is great to be able to join you in this time of worship. Together we find an expression for our hopes, our fears, our gratitude, and our faith. Together we will receive the gift of Holy Communion, and together we will join in giving thanks to God for all of the goodnesses in the world and in our lives. Let me invite you to have on hand some bread and juice or something that would be communion for you. This sacrament, this sign of God's grace is given to us all, no matter our age or stage of faith. Christ set our communion table. He is the host and he is the holy meal, the living bread and the cup of life. And he invites us all as his table of grace extends into your home. With God's grace to guide us, Christ's gifts to sustain us, and the fellowship found in the Holy Spirit to unite us, let us join in worship. Please join me responsibly in our call to worship. We have started down a road that will take us to the cross. It is a journey we take together and a journey each makes alone. We are invited to notice things on the way, to notice the sharp stones, the uneven ground, the mercy of shade, the faithfulness of those who walk with us. We carry little with us but that which is in our hearts, hope, trust, fear, apprehension, wonder, sorrow. On this walk we rest and sing and pray and listen. In our worship we rest and sing and pray and listen. Then let us worship God. Oh, give us strength. 
strength in thee to fight, in thee to conquer sin. Hear these words of David from Psalm 9, verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 14. I will thank you, Lord, with all my heart. I will talk about all your wonderful acts. I will celebrate and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, Most High. The Lord is a safe place for the oppressed, a safe place in difficult times. Those who know your name trust you because you have not abandoned any who seek you, Lord. Sing praises to the Lord who lives in Zion. Proclaim his mighty acts among all people. Because the one who avenges bloodshed remembers those who suffer, the Lord hasn't forgotten their cries for help. Have mercy on me, Lord. Just look how I suffer because of those who hate me. But you are the one who brings me back from the very gates of death so I can declare all your praises so I can rejoice in your salvation in the gates of daughter Zion.
as God has shared so many goodnesses in our lives, as God has provided so much love, mercy, and justice in our lives, we come to offer back to God what we can today. Mighty God, as we remember the strength of Jesus facing the temptation offered by the devil, we remember too clearly how the temptations of food, of authority, and power have overcome us. We've been tricked to believe our wants, our needs, and more is always better. May we offer our gifts to you this day with generosity and gratitude. Strengthen us to resist temptation that would present security or power in anyone but you. In Christ we pray, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Please join me in prayer. Most holy God, your goodness always seeks us, and you ask our readiness to receive it. Please increase our eagerness for you and enlarge our ability to share your love around. Gracious God, steer us through times of temptation and deliver us from evil. On this Sunday, in the gift of Lent that you have given to us, we think of those who are being acutely tempted, tempted to look the other way when wrong is happening in their workplace, tempted to misuse their gifts for a sordid purpose, tempted to allow untamed emotions to hold sway, tempted by the corrupting power of money, and those tempted to stay in a rut rather than strike out on new paths for you. Generous God, steer us through times of temptation and deliver us from evil. We pray to you also for the many who feel pushed and tested almost beyond their endurance, those in positions of heavy responsibility who feel overloaded to the point of collapse, or those pressured from all sides by factions in workplace or community, suffering people, and all who must watch a loved one suffer, who feel they can bear no more. Kindly folk whose patience with a difficult friend is now at a breaking point. Persecuted Christians whose faith seems stretched beyond their limit. And the depressed whose inner being endures a misery which no human word can alleviate. Merciful God, steer us through these times of temptation and deliver us from evil. We also pray for those who seem to be in a position of advantage, the happy, that their happiness may always be used for goodwill and compassion, the strong, that their energies may be used wisely and gently, the clever, that they may employ their mental facility for good, not evil, for the rich, that their wealth may be shared with the uplifting of the poor, for the powerful, that they may use their position as a blessing to humanity. And those of strong faith, that they may walk humbly and affirm the weaker souls. Righteous God, steer us through times of temptation and deliver us from evil. And now, most holy God, we pray for each other. None of us know the extent of the pressures that some may be under this very day. Look upon us all. Read our thoughts and weigh our feelings, and by your utter resourcefulness, save us in the time of trial and deliver us from all evil. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before and after the scripture, as we hear the gospel reading from the book of Luke, let us take some time of silence as the word of God enters our ears, eyes, and hearts. Our Gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus returned from the Jordan River full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for forty days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterward Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, Since you are God's Son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, it's written, people won't only live by bread. Next, the devil led him to a high place and showed him in a single instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said, I will give you this whole domain and the glory of all these kingdoms. It's been entrusted to me and I can give it to anyone I want. Therefore, if you will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It's written, You will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil brought him into Jerusalem and stood him at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, Since you are God's son, throw yourself down from here, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you and they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit your foot on a stone. Jesus answered, It's been said, Don't test the Lord your God. After finishing every temptation, the devil departed from him until the next opportunity. With the coolness of the waters of the River Jordan on his skin and the voice of God ringing in his ears and heart, the voice of God calling him beloved, Jesus is equipped. He has what he needs to take a space of time to focus. He has days and days and days set aside to look deeply down into himself and to look daringly up to God. He has some centering to do, some alignment, some preparation, some planning. And in that course of time in the Judean wilderness among the critters and the herds of goats and scrub brush, Jesus prays and ponders about what is ahead. What will he do with his life? Well, not his life exactly, the life dedicated fully to the way and will of God. Where would the time ahead take him? What shall he say? Who will he meet? Will he go it alone or will be those there who will want to join him? Can't he simply, miraculously cure and heal everyone in the village? Can't he simply feed tens of thousands who are hungry? Can't he simply sway the political, social, economic, military powers to see where the true power is? Days and days and days to mull things over and try things on and project ahead where he will go and what he will do. 
there's so much to do, so much needed, so much proclaiming, convincing, inviting that will be needed, so much mercy, forgiveness, and healing needed, so much trust and integrity, perseverance and patience needed, so much immediate need to meet, so much stamina for the long haul required. Days and days and days. Jesus was in that space in the wilderness, finding the, the kernel, the core, the gospel of his days ahead, confirming and strengthening and knowing that it is, it is not about seeking numbers or name recognition or charts and graphs of productivity, it's not about the statistics of satisfied customers or the short-term expedient answer. It's not about being religious or going through the motions of piety. No, none of these will sustain. None of these will endure. None of these is the way. Days and days and days to consider what shape and form, what wilderness, what boundaries. Days and days and days to center on what can be let go, what can die, and what can be invited into living, thriving, and transforming. Days and days and days. They stretch before you in the season of Lent. We have a gift from God of a season where we can lean on God more, where we can get to look deeply into ourselves and daringly up to God. With the waters of our baptism, still recent memory, and the divine voice echoing in your heart, calling you beloved, you are equipped. You have what you need to go into these days to try on and try out the ways of God and discover how they will become your way of life. Days and days and days to center, to pray, to ponder. Our life, our love, our longing is to see and hear and know what God is doing and to strip away anything complicating, obstructing us from imitating God's love and to find the kernel, the core, the gospel that is less about sorrow and more about love, less about a victim and more about a victor. It's less about sin and more about transformation. Days and days and days to fill our hearts and minds, to prepare ourselves to be changed and to open ourselves to the Spirit's gift of the season of Lent. Days and days and days. Thanks be to God.
Let us join in the great thanksgiving. May the God of hope be with you and also with you. Let us bring our hearts to God. We offer them to God who fills them with life. With songs on our lips and in our hearts, let us praise God. We sing of what we believe, offering thanksgivings from our hearts. From the deep wilderness of chaos, you brought forth the refuge of your heart. God, our God, creating mountains that shade the valleys below, rich grain and vegetables to feed the hungry, rivers and lakes filled with the water of life. This creation was entrusted to those shaped in your image, the first fruits of your love. But we chose to follow temptation into that wilderness we call death. Seeking to be generous to all, you continue to send prophets to us, women and men who carried your words to us in their hands and their hearts. Yet we continue to serve the empty promises of sin and fear. So you sent the word near to us in Jesus, the one who came to reveal your salvation to us. With old timers as well as newcomers, with insiders and those who have stood outside, we offer our songs of praise to you. Holy, holy, holy are you, giver of all goodness. Creation's heart overflows with joyous praise to you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who is full of the Spirit. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of mercy and hope, and blessed is Jesus Christ, Lord of all. When he could have feasted on glory, he came to feed all who hungered for hope and for life. When he could have strode the halls of power, he chose to walk the wilderness, picking up all who stumble along the way. When he could have chosen the easy way, letting the angels carry the burden, he confronted death face to face, being flung into its wasteland where you brought him forth into new life. As we seek to believe, in our hearts, all he did and taught, and we try to confess his death and resurrection, we proclaim the word of faith that is so mysterious. Christ died, trusting in your continued presence. Christ is raised, the first fruits of resurrection. Christ will come, making no distinction, but welcoming all into that kingdom, overflowing with mercy and hope. Led by you, we come to this table with the first fruits of redemption, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, are filled with the gifts of your spirit and offered to all who gather before you. And as we are fed by the bread of life, may we become as generous as you, making no distinction as to whom we will serve. Jesus took the bread and blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Together, let us eat the bread of life. As the cup of life nourishes us with your life, may we be poured out for others, feeding those who are hungry, joining the voices of the powerless, offering our lives in grace and hope to all. Jesus took the cup, gave thanks for it, offers it to us, offers us the cup of the new covenant, the cup of life. Let us share in that cup. And when we gather at last where you dwell, O Lord, we will celebrate the great feast of the first fruits of your love and grace, joining our sisters and brothers in praising you, Almighty God, Holy One. Amen. Bye. 
we have gathered in God's presence and have shared in worship. Now may we go forth into the world confident that we are God's children. Know that you have been called by name. In our daily life, may we align ourselves to God's will, seeking direction to follow our hope and a future in Jesus Christ. And may we have patience in the waiting. In the challenges and joys we face, may we be assured that we do not face them alone. Let us go in peace, hope, and love. In the name of our compassionate and powerful God, the Son, our Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.